So guys, I think I finally found it, uh, the perfect video camera. Now notice I'm saying video, not photo camera. If you want photo, this might not be it for you. But if you're looking for an amazing video camera, I think Blackmagic might have just done it. Now, it's nearly perfect, maybe I should say. There are a few things that are, you know, kind of a pain in the ass. So first, let me start with the good. Uh, I think the biggest thing, you know, worth mentioning about this camera is just the overall image quality. Uh, image quality in this camera is king. I, I would actually say it's probably the best image quality you're gonna get uh, in any camera out there right now that's under $3,000. And in fact, I think this also will match the quality of pretty much all the cameras out there uh, uh, that will go uh, around up to like $10,000. Uh, and the amazing thing about it is just the, the small form factor that you see up here. With this camera, we are no longer talking about 8-bit uh, or H.264 codecs or uh, XAVC or any of that you know crap. We are talking about real cinema quality. This is something that will for sure work for any broadcast job you gotta do out there, but even something that you can blow up on a big screen uh, in case you wanted to shoot a film with this. I've been shooting with this camera in all kinds of scenarios, uh, different uh, lighting conditions, with the different uh, you know recording options, whether it's different flavors of ProRes or the, the RAW, uh, and they all look amazing. Uh, there's an advantage, obviously, to shooting RAW in terms of that you can always go in and change things like ISO, uh, white balance, uh, you know, your sharpening, things like that. Uh, but obviously, you have bigger file sizes, uh, which Blackmagic RAW is going to fix that uh, once it's implemented. But uh, Apple ProRes is also beautiful on this camera. Um, the, there's really nothing negative I can say when it comes to the image quality. Next thing I love about this camera is the form factor. Like I said, it's small. Maybe it's not a pocket camera exactly, how uh, as Blackmagic calls it, unless you're wearing, I don't know, big clown pants or something like that with giant pockets. Uh, but it, it is, you know, obviously when it comes to cinema cameras, it is uh, one of the, the smallest cinema cameras. Um, but what's actually amazing about it is that it's very light. It's actually lighter than uh, a GH4. Uh, and, and some of the other like DSLR cameras on the market right now, uh, and it's uh, you know and it's all I would say mainly because of the the fact that they used a carbon fiber or it's I guess it's polycarbonate. It's a type of plastic that's reinforced with carbon fibers. So it's actually uh, some people I know were saying it feels cheap or plasticky, but trust me, I've dropped this camera. It nothing happened to it. It's. Uh, very sturdy even though it looks like it's just plastic it's actually very sturdy material and also just the overall layout of it i mean it's beautifully laid out when if you're looking for a video camera what i mean by that is it has everything that a video operator will need and nothing more uh, all the buttons up here are dedicated to video and even though it kind of looks like a dslr at first glance like i said it's designed, it's mainly, I guess, just takes that shape just so that you can hold it in your hand and kind of walk around with it and operate it this way if you want to. Um, but when it comes to the buttons, uh, you know, you have a record button, you have another big record button up here. You have uh, ISO, um, uh, shutter, and then white balance, for example, settings here. Um, you have, you know, your on-off switch, you have three different function buttons here that you can customize. Uh, here you have these two big microphones, uh, which are, they, they actually get pretty decent audio, if you, but, you know, it's more mostly audio that you're going to use for uh, probably a scratch audio. On the back, you have a beautiful 5-inch full 1080p display that's, this thing is actually beautiful to work with, even when you're working outside in broad daylight and the viewing angle is beautiful on this. I mean, I love everything about this display and it's touch the screen. So you go through the menu, you know, just by touching it. The only thing maybe is I wish it was, you know, kind of articulated a little bit because if you're holding it at your eye level, it's perfect. But there was many times when I was operating it a bit lower like this, and then it gets a little bit tough to try to like to see, right? So then you have to kind of put it up or just, you know, mount another monitor. So that, that's the only thing. I wish you know they allowed you to kind of swivel a little bit. And then some of the other buttons you have here on the back are uh, you have your shutter uh, or uh, aperture you know button. Uh, you have a focus button. You have uh, a high frame rate button. So you actually press that and we'll switch between your, your slow motion. You have your zoom button. You have your menu button and playback button. Uh, and that's it. That's really all you need uh, as far as uh, inputs and outputs. Again, you've got everything really that you need right at your hand. So uh, first, maybe let me show you here. This is the card compartment. So you have your CFAST 2.0 uh, compartment and then SD cards. And you can record, like I said, to both cards. No, you cannot record to both cards. 
at the same time. Uh, on this side up here, you got your 3.5 millimeter microphone input. Uh, let me open these up. So you have your microphone input up there, and you also have headphone input, which is, you know, again, really great. Uh, you know, and, and if you've been working, for example, with those hybrid sort of DSLR or D DSLM type of cameras, uh, that not all of them have, you know, a, first of all, proper microphone connections, but also they don't even have headphones, so you can monitor your audio. Uh, this will come in really handy. Has full HDMI connection, works beautifully. Uh, and then up here, you've got a 12 volt power input connection, uh, and it comes with a AC adapter, so you can plug it in and, and power it that way. And then also you've got a mini XLR adapter uh, for connecting microphones. Now, it does not come with any the cables to adapt it, so I did actually end up getting a cable. I have it up here. Uh, it's not that expensive. Basically has a mini XLR connection on one end and a full-size XLR connection. This will provide phantom power for you. Uh, so that this will allow you to actually connect uh, professional, you know, like I said, cinema microphones. And it's just great to see this kind of connection again in a camera this size. So like I said, it's a proper video or you can call it a cinema camera. It comes with a, a micro four thirds mount, uh, but just like on the GH5, a lot of times I would be using this camera with uh, my Metabone Speed Booster. So this way you essentially have, uh, you know, super 35 millimeter image sensor, which is kind of a standard cinema size image sensor and on top of that you'll gain an extra stop of light so it's even better in low light even though this camera is already amazing in low light uh, but yeah micro four thirds and the good thing about micro four thirds is also the fact that uh, if you want to shoot kind of on a longer range you want to use a zoom lens then uh, again micro four thirds it just means you don't have to have as long of a lens because you're automatically cropping in on the on the lens. Another thing I love about this camera is actually the whole menu. Uh, you know, it uses basically the Blackmagic uh, menu system, which if you've used any of the Blackmagic cinema cameras like the Ursa Mini uh, 4K, 4.6K or Pro, uh, then you're gonna love this one and you're gonna feel also very familiar because it's pretty much identical to those cameras. If you've never used this camera and you just kind of jump into it, I, I mean, maybe it will take you five minutes because it's so simple, it makes sense that Five minutes, you need to figure out where everything is. And the operating system in this camera, again, just like in the other Blackmagic uh, cinema cameras, allows you to save your custom presets. So if you like, you know, adjust the settings the way you like them, you can save it as different user profiles. You can load them, uh, and you can even exchange them between different cameras. You can even load in uh, your LUTs or different LUTs you find on the internet or whatever. You can load in a whole bunch of them, and you can very quickly on the field kind of preview how your shot is going to look with that uh, lookup table applied. Um, so that's really cool. Another option this camera has uh, is actually uh, Bluetooth. So uh, again, through the menu, you easily enable it and you can connect uh, your phones. Right now, there aren't really many apps. There's one app that Blackmagic developed for the iPad only. Uh, for the iPhone, there is actually one app right now uh, that uh, I'll provide the link for that if you guys are interested. It's five bucks, I think, five dollars. And it's a great app, literally you, through your phone, you'll be able to control all the settings pretty much in the camera, like shutter angle, white balance, frame rate. You can start and stop recording the camera. If you have micro four thirds lenses that are electronic, then in that app, you can pull focus and it actually works amazingly smooth. So let's say if you were flying this on a gimbal and you did want somebody else to pull focus and you don't have a wireless follow focus system, then you could actually pull focus that way. You can slate your shots and all of that stuff Again, you can do it remotely through your phone. So it comes in really handy. And by the way, if you get that app, uh, then you can actually use that same app to control the Ursa Mini Pro. Another really cool thing in this camera is the fact that uh, they implemented a dual ISO. Uh, really what that means is that the circuitry will basically change and will read out the information from the sensor at two different settings. Uh, so you have uh, the first base ISO is uh, ISO 400, meaning 400 is gonna be like your neutral look and if you go below that, uh, then it will basically increase the gain on the on the shot. That's kind of what happens with all cameras. If you go above uh, ISO 400, so let's say ISO 800, all the way up to ISO 1000, you're basically just adding gain. Now, once you go above ISO 1000, so it starts with uh, ISO 1250, that actually then will automatically switch to uh, the base ISO of uh, the second base ISO. Uh, which is uh, ISO 3200. So again, at that point, it just decreases the gain. Now, even if you go uh, up to ISO 10,000 on this camera, I find it perfectly clean. Like you, you can use it in a professional application. Uh, you know, obviously you gotta be shooting with enough light. If you're shooting 
doesn't matter you know what ISO but if you're shooting you know even with like I said ISO 400 and a really really dark setting where just there's not enough light and then afterwards you try to readjust the exposure by color correcting and things like that then you sh your shot is gonna look like shit so basics of cinematography so you actually want to be always uh, adding more light shooting with more light than you need and then afterwards maybe decreasing and not increasing the exposure in post uh, but like I said, if you have enough light or you properly adjust your, your lighting, uh, you know, or you're shooting in the right conditions, then ISO 10,000 on this camera looks beautiful. Um, and even if, if you really, really, let's say you're doing a documentary or something and it's just like, you know, your only chance to get a certain shot, but it just happens to be too dark. If you have to go to the max ISO of 25,600, you can still get a usable image. Yes, it's going to be noisy. Obviously, if you're going to the maximum, but... Uh, but like I said, it's still a usable image, uh, and if you go and post and further clean it up, I'm sure you can you can actually get away with it. But you know what? Uh, just like Blackmagic promised, the, this camera is pretty damn good in low light. Uh, and I actually did a comparison, comparing this to uh, three other cameras: uh, Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini Pro. I also compared it to the GH5 and the Sony A7 III. And even though this camera isn't as clean as, for example, you know the the Sony cameras. Uh, it is still very close up there and like I said at the end of the day you're shooting raw if you want to in this camera So you're just overall you have a much better image quality Another thing I love in this camera is the slow motion so 4k you can record up to 60 frames per second and that looks beautiful uh, And it's very simple again you just press the high frame rate button on the back and it will automatically switch uh, if, you're, if you're in HD then you can switch up to 120 frames per second that also looks beautiful uh, but I myself didn't really shoot much in 1080 because well, why would I? I when this camera can record beautiful 4k uh, images so what are the bad things with this camera um, not many like I said I mentioned the one I, I just wish the screen could tilt uh, that would just would have been helpful but then again some some of you might not care about that especially once you have a monitor mounted uh, the really the biggest complaint about it is the battery life now it's not horrible I mean you can still obviously I shot with it and I work with it you're just simply gonna need to get more batteries so the good thing about it is this camera uses the really affordable and easy to find Sony LPE6 batteries uh, it actually comes with one battery when you get it it does not come with a charger though so you will need to get that anyways now with one battery like a, like a battery that actually works with this camera and not all of them do uh, but the ones that do work with this camera uh, you'll get around 40 minutes uh, of like continuous recording when you're shooting in 4k In HD it's a little bit longer uh, almost 50 minutes uh, now if you're uh, also providing phantom power through the mini XLR connection that drops to around 30 minutes so just keep that in mind uh, but definitely like I said it's yeah it kind of sucks I wish you had a longer you know battery life but it does work so if you just get enough of these batteries and you'll get through the day with it no problem uh, the batteries that work the best obviously as in it shows properly the you know how the percentage of how much battery you have left and all that stuff are the Canon original batteries but they're expensive some of the other replacements that I like that are really affordable are the wasabi batteries I got these on Amazon and there's a kit you can get actually with a dual charger and two batteries uh, so I actually end up picking uh, then that plus two extra batteries and another battery I tried with it uh, that works really well is uh, Watson batteries uh, those ones also work a battery that I've tried that didn't work with it very well are these max batteries which again I picked them up on, on Amazon so if you want to know you know which batteries will work with it like I, I can guarantee you the wasabi batteries will and then the Watson batteries and then obviously the original Canon batteries the Canons are the best because they properly will show you how much basically in percentage how much battery you have left otherwise the other batteries they kind of show you also the percentage but not it's not very accurate so that's the problem with it uh, but pretty much I would always switch to the voltage uh, display and I knew that once I'm dropping to like six and a half volts pretty much the battery is dead so pretty much at that point I would change out the batteries now you do want to keep an eye out on the battery if you're running off these small batteries because if you are in the middle of recording a, a shot while you know your your battery basically ends up dying then you will lose that shot now there were some people again on the internet who said that no that's not true the shot stays there well it depends if you're shooting raw which just saves individual frames or you know photos then yes it will record up to those you know th those photos that it manages to save to the, to your card and then the, the the last few frames might not get saved but if you're recording to let's say you know apple pro res uh one continuous file then no that file will completely just doesn't get saved 
Now, what if you want to use this camera for, let's say, like doing a live event uh, or, or let's say doing interviews where you're going to need, a, you know, a good sort of a phantom powered microphone on here and all that stuff. And you want to be able to record with it without worrying that the camera will shut off on you uh, and you lose all your recordings. Then you definitely will need a, a solution. There's obviously, like I said, there's a 12 volt power input up here. You will need to get a cable for that, though. Uh, it's, a, it's a cable that Blackmagic does sell, so you can buy that. Uh, and then you can plug that into, you know, PTAP or, uh, you know, or many other kind of solutions out there. I found one solution that I've been kind of using, and that's basically just using a V-mount. Uh, here I have this V-mount. This is from uh, JTZ. It's a really beautiful, actually, battery plate. Actually has built-in um, lithium-ion batteries. So even if you need to hot swap, let's say, the battery, uh, then this thing will still work. Another thing I love about this battery plate is that here on the side, You've got all kinds of input and output you know, connections, and it has an 8-volt uh, connection. What that means, it actually comes with this kind of 8-volt basically to DC uh, cable when you buy this plate. Uh, what that means is then you can use one of those dummy batteries. Here's the one that I got. Uh, and then you just put that in there on the bottom, um, and you can power the camera that way. So if I remove the battery here... Now you can remove this door uh, if you don't want to leave you hanging open. It's very easy, uh, just like a switch. But I actually drilled a little hole there on the bottom of the door so I can actually close it too. And yeah, once you have this thing in there, obviously you want to put in your battery. Uh, so again, it's a standard V-mount battery plate. So you put in any V-mount battery. These are really nice ones actually from Watson again. Uh, these are uh, kind of like these professional cinema batteries. They're kind of expensive. It's actually designed more for red cameras. So you don't necessarily have to get these, but if you have them, they'll, they'll, they'll work. Like I said, any V-mount battery. You put that in there and uh, yeah, just turn on the battery plate. And with a battery like this, this one's 98 uh, watt hours, you will get almost, uh, give and take, depending on how, you, how much you're recording on that stuff, but you'll get almost seven hours. So really amazing then, and it really then extends the thing, the, the battery life. Obviously, using the phantom power that will decrease it, but still, with two V-mount batteries, you can you can get by through you know through the whole day. And as you can see, it powers the the camera beautifully using this dummy battery. So this way, you don't have to look for that specialized basic cable. How would you then carry this around, right? Because obviously, you don't want to be taking these things with you and just have this loose. Uh, well, this JTZ battery uh, V-mount battery plate comes with uh, 50 mm millimeter rods. So once you put, let's say, this camera on some kind of a rig with rods, you just put it here on the back, and you know that's how you'll you'll carry it. And I do have a sort of a rig, quick setup. I'll show you in this video, but I'm gonna go into more detail about that in, uh, in some of my other kind of future videos. Where I'll talk about some rigs, and also if, for those of you guys who are uh, supporting me already on Patreon, I will show you guys my current setup and then future kind of uh, rigs and things like that I'm testing for this camera. And for those of you guys who haven't joined me yet on Patreon, make sure you do. Uh, in return, like I said, you, outside of getting basically extra material, you also get to download this raw footage from this camera, all the tests that I shot and things like that. You know, and also from other films and things like that that I'm working on. Plus, you also get a chance to uh, participate in live streams, win uh, filmmaking gear uh, giveaways that I'll be doing over there. Plus, you'll get my custom lots that I give away whenever I work on a new project. And again, that's exclusive to my Patreon uh, supporters. So thank you guys, because without your support, I wouldn't even be able to do these kind of videos, uh, you know, these free videos here on YouTube. Uh, but if you don't want to join on Patreon, then again, I'm still going to be putting out stuff uh, out here on YouTube. So don't worry, uh, you know, sometimes it might just come with a little bit of a delay. Uh, so far, I've been shooting with this camera for uh, oh, just over a month, and uh, I've been mostly shooting with these little batteries. And the reason is because I do actually want to keep this camera nice and small. That's the beautiful thing about it, is that... It's for the first time a cinema camera, you know, with an actual cinema image quality in this small image, you know, kind of form factor. Now, having said that, I, I did add one thing that I think is very necessary, and that's a tap handle. If you're just using the camera handheld like this, it's going to work great. But what if you want to get those kind of low angle shots, things like that? That's when a tap handle is going to come in really handy. So what I did is I actually installed uh, this uh, cold shoe mount up here and, and that's because the, the camera actually comes with a quarter 20 thread on the top uh, and this is a cold shoe mount from a small rig uh, very cheap on amazon you can get it again 
check out the links if you want to find out you know which ones I got and you just need one of these you attach it here you have a cold shoe mount and then small rigs also sells this uh, top handle they sell various ones but this one I, I like the most again it has a cold shoe mount up here uh, it has 15 millimeter uh, rail attachment up here on the front which I'll show you why it come, that comes in handy has various 3 8 and a quarter 20 you know basically threads on the bottom and on the sides uh, plus it has two cold shoe mounts on the top uh, which actually have well the front one here has this kind of a locking mechanism uh, so anyways the way I would use it is I would you know just slide this here on the top and then just tighten this to lock it and right there you see how quick and easy it is you can attach this and now you can carry the camera comfortably in your hand like this uh, and on top of that now you have two extra uh, basically cold shoe mounts so you can attach your microphone up here uh, let's say a wireless you know, microphone receiver or something else on the back maybe you can even mount a monitor there's cold shoe mounts for monitors if you wanted to the way I mount the monitor is actually using the 15 millimeter rod and uh, the reason is because it then allows you a lot of articulation so again you can get this uh, various lengths that they provide of 15 millimeter rails again small rig uh, and just put this in here now by the way no I'm not getting paid by by small rig or by anybody here I paid for the camera with my own money and all the stuff I paid with my own money in. but it's definitely worth it uh, it's a nice rig you attach here on the top and then because you have this rail now obviously you can mount it on the left on the right side whatever you want to and then again small rig has this sort of a you know um, it's more I guess designed for EVFs but it works for monitors too this attachment with this little arm and again I'll provide the links to all these parts uh, and then basically you just you know attach it here let's say you can tighten it um, and let's say you want to have the monitor all the way out there you can do that too if you want to you can loosen this and you can move the monitor see up and down this rail if let's say you want to you know point it up and I don't know put the monitor really high you can do that uh, or have the monitor let's say behind you then again you can do that because now you can slide it this way so it's very you know it gives you a lot of options basically uh, usually I would have it here let me rotate it I would kind of put it like this you know out here in front of me tighten this tighten that uh, and then I'll mount my monitor up here this little cable HDMI cable plug in it to your camera uh, and now as you can see I can with this top handle I can hold the camera and then I'm holding you know even a complicated kind of a heavier monitor setup like this safely because I know this is not no longer attached to that just that single quarter 20 screw on top of the camera it's attached to the handle uh, directly to the handle you know using these rails and it's very sturdy and then the camera just hangs off of the, the cold shoe mount so very easy to work with this way and this way even if I'm working let's say handheld if, I, like, if I'm like this I'll just basically move this over because I can move everything and I can center the monitor to be right here or if I have it on a shoulder rig then I'll have it like this on the shoulder rig and this way the monitor is facing me directly uh, so that's even even more comfortable uh, another little thing I'll, I'll show you is uh, which I kind of showed in previous videos is this is from Lenport actually it is little uh, basically v-mount quick release plate for monitors it's so so handy I, I bought a multiple of these now and I use it uh, pretty much on all of my EVFs and monitors because it just means I can take the monitor off quickly put it away in my camera bag and then when I need it snap it in there and it just locks in place um, and yeah and, and so I think this is the best way to kind of attach a monitor and it still leaves you space here so for example if you want to attach sort of a professional XLR microphone like this one then again you can attach it uh, and as you'll notice here you have this sort of a quick uh, kind of locking mechanism on the cold shoe which again is comes in really handy because for example once the microphone's in there you know that even if this goes loose not the, your microphone or whatever you have mounted on there won't fall out so for example up here my favorite sort of on-camera professional microphone is the Asden SGM uh, 250CX I mounted it on there and then using that cable that I talked about before the full to mini XLR uh, just plug it all here and attach it to the side of the camera now obviously once you set up something like this uh, then you probably you know it might not be comfortable to, for you to hold it uh, and especially because this camera you know it's a cinema camera so it doesn't have a, a internally stabilized image sensor now if you by the way if you attach uh, if micro four-third lenses on this 
which do, do have built-in image stabilization, then the stabilization within the lens will still actually work. And, and when I did tests, like for example, using this uh, Lumix Vario 12 to 35 millimeter, when I was zoomed in all the way at 35 millimeters, uh, this is how the shot looks when uh, it's basically without the stabilization. Uh, and then now here's the same shot with the stabilization enabled. And as you can see, it makes quite a bit of a difference. This is also Lumix Vario lens, but this is the 35 to 100 millimeter. When I'm zoomed in all the way at 100, uh, and with the lens stabilization, it does a really good job. So you just hold the camera steady and then the stabilization will definitely smooth out the shot. Here's how the shot looks without the image stabilization. As you notice, the shaking really, really adds there to the, 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 the camera. So here's how my possible sort of a handheld kind of run and gun setup could look with a monitor, microphone attached. Now let's see if you want to also uh, attach the V-mount battery plate with the V-mount battery itself. Uh, so you can power this for a lot longer than you definitely are going to need some kind of rail system. So it actually becomes sort of like a proper cinema rig. Uh, the battery plate actually works well in this position because it basically offsets the weight. So you can put the rest this on your uh, shoulder here and it basically balances the, the camera, right? Because the weight is there uh, all the way in the back. Uh, I also have the monitor here. So I show you from this side, it's comfortable because I can hold it here with my hands uh, and I can view exactly here what, I, what I'm seeing basically in the camera. If I want to, I have the camera right here, so I can change the settings too that way. If you, for example, were to throw a cinema lens on this, then again, you can mount your follow focus up here, so you can still operate it. Because you're resting it on your shoulder, it's over just a bigger, now heavier rig. It means that suddenly you can use the small camera uh, in, in like a proper cinema camera for, let's say, handheld work, but it's actually going to look very smooth, even though, again, it doesn't have an internally stabilized image sensor. But the cool thing is that even though you have this whole rig like this, let's say you're, you know, you're shooting and suddenly you're like, you know what, I need to throw this camera up on a gimbal. Well, the beautiful thing is that you can now very quickly disassemble all of this stuff and you can throw it up on your, on your favorite gimbal. So here, let me detach all of these things. See, just by removing the top handle, you're pretty much removing all of these accessories here on the top. And now you just have to take the camera off from this rig. Uh, take out, let's say this, you know, dummy battery throw in your actual battery and you see how quickly that, you know that that worked you're ready now to throw this on your gimbal and you can start working with it now i did actually test this camera out on the dji ronin s works beautifully on that gimbal but in that case uh, because you know here the camera is a little bit larger on the right side it, it will not clear the motor uh, so basically the easy fix for that is you just up attach uh, like a quick release plate i, I use this manfrotto one and it just slit the camera this way off to the to the left on the new uh Mozwa air 2 gimbal which is uh kind of my i think my new favorite gimbal i'm still in the middle of testing it and so you know kind of testing out all the new features but i love it and especially love it with this uh you know a camera because uh, the gimbal you can get it the, the kit with the wireless follow focus unit which then means that when i was flying this camera with the speed booster and cinema lenses I was able to attach the follow focus and single-handedly I was able to operate, run around with this uh, camera basically uh, and myself while I was operating the gimbal I could also operate the focus and suddenly this means that in the world of cinema and I, with actual cinema camera one person can operate the whole camera, the gimbal and the focus. I got this camera mainly because I was looking for a B camera to my Ursa Mini Pro uh, something that also delivers kind of beautiful natural skin tones and just overall beautiful colors you know has you know capability of shooting in raw but in pro or all that stuff but something that's much smaller because the ursa mini pro uh even though it's a mini it's it's still a hassle you know like i said hooking it up you pretty much need the, the new dji ronin 2 uh, or, or the movi pro gimbals if you want to fly that camera and again then it's much more expensive much bigger much more complicated setup so with this camera i just thought you know, I'll get something that's, you know, close to image quality of the Ursa Mini Pro, uh, but it's much, much smaller and I can then fly it on a small gimbal uh, like the DJI Ronin S or, or, you know, Crane 2 or, or Mozo Air 2. And like I said, this works actually so well, this camera, that uh, it's actually funny, but for the, for the last month, I, I've been shooting pretty much everything on this camera. I pretty much wouldn't even take my Ursa Mini Pro. Uh, and the, one of the reasons is because it's so small and so easy to work with this camera. So it's actually funny because now this B camera kind of became now my A camera. Not only that, but it's definitely going to replace the Ursa Mini Pro whenever I'm shooting in low light. Because as you guys saw from the tests, 
And again, if you guys want to see the full in-depth low light test that I did in comparison to some of the other cameras, then uh, join me on Patreon. You'll, you'll get all that stuff there, plus the raw footage, uh, so you can kind of see for yourself. But like I said, the really cool thing about this camera is that it's it's a really beautiful cinema camera that works amazingly well in low light. I think even better than like the the new DSM C2 uh, red you know cinema cameras. Um, really, really good low light cinema camera. So definitely is going to be my A camera in any low light situations. Uh, but might even be my my just in general low light camera. I think the only place where I will still use my Ursa Mini Pro is when I'm really shooting those extreme dynamic range kind of situations, so really harsh sunlight and things like that. Not to say that this camera can't handle that because you know if you look at some of the tests I shot, the sun is blasting or shooting even into the sun. This camera, you know, even though it has a smaller dynamic range than the Ursa Mini Pro, it still produces beautiful images. The, the highlight roll-off is, is really nice on this, and skin tones and uh, you know, all the colors in general look really beautiful. And on top of that, you get uh, the full version uh, of uh, the really amazing editing software, which is DaVinci Resolve, which also happens to be, I, I, th I think, the number one color grading software plus visual effects software and, and uh, audio mixing software. And if you haven't actually seen my recent video where I talk about how I dumped Adobe Premiere and their subscription model for DaVinci Resolve, then uh, uh, again, check that out and you're gonna see some of the reasons why I really love that editing suite. And like I said, you get the camera and that full software for you know $1,300. Whether you're just a beginner looking into maybe just shooting really good quality home video, again, get a proper video camera like this one. But even if you're a filmmaker and you're looking for a cinema camera, then get this. I would say the only maybe application where this camera, you know, I wouldn't recommend it for is if you're somebody who's who's doing vlogging, like a lot of vlogging, serious vlogging, where you're gonna be basically pointing the camera at yourself a lot, because well, a you don't have a flippable screen, but you also don't have uh, out of focus in this camera. So that's it for this video. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button, share it. Uh, if you want to follow me and see all the you know future videos I'm going to be uploading about some of the uh, more tests I'll be doing with this, plus some of the cages and different accessories I'll be testing out with this camera, uh, then just follow me on my website. Best way to do that is subscribe to my newsletter at TomAntosFilms.com. Uh, an even better way is uh, help support me in making these videos by joining me as a patron. Uh, at patreon.com slash tomantos and over there in return like i said you'll get a whole bunch of uh, cool perks downloadable footage gear giveaways things like that uh, and you'll also get access to these videos i'm putting out up here earlier than everybody else anyways i'll see you guys in the next video bye